There are three different types of vehicles that I think that you guys should have in your life. Well, let me change that up. There are four different types of vehicles I think that you should have in your life. And today I'm going to talk about each one and why you need them. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And for those of you new, my name is Mark. Now today, I'm going to go over these different vehicles that I think that you guys should have. Uh, but you might be thinking to yourself, hey Mark, why do you think that I need four different vehicles? And B, how do you think I can afford four different vehicles? Now let's start off with the first thing. Do we need four different vehicles? No, you don't have to have four different vehicles. You can if you want, depend on your budget and how many cars you really want to have in your driveway but there are four different types of vehicles. So if you have a couple of them that fit into two different categories, you don't need to have four. I personally have three, but do I even really need three? No, not exactly, but I'm gonna probably stick with three. I could have two of them and get away with all four categories. And I bet you guys are wondering, what are the different categories? What type of vehicles do I need? Well, let's start off with the first one. Now, the first type of vehicle I think that you need is going to have to be some kind of truck, SUV, van, or anything like that. Something you can use to haul your stuff around because how many times you've been like, hey, I bought a TV, how am I gonna get it home? I bought a couch, how am I gonna get it home? You know, and being a car guy, I carry car parts. So you need something that you can carry around, spare parts, spare engines, spare wheels, tires, whatever you need. Now what I personally have, this is a 1997 Chevy K1500. And this has the Z71 off-road package. And since it's the Z71 off-road package, that means this thing is four-wheel drive. So this serves me for a couple of different purposes. With these off-road tires, if I want to, I can go off-road, I can go wheeling, I can go camping. You know, some of the things that you can't really do in your car. You can in some spots, but that's more glamping and I'm not really into that. The other purpose of the four-wheel drive is I live in Reno, Nevada and it snows here. And I know in a lot of the country it snows there as well. So having a four-wheel drive helps me get around in the winter. The snow here in Reno doesn't stay that long. Usually it'll snow about a foot or two for about a week and then it melts off and then we're back to having dry pavement again. But for those couple weeks out of the year, this is how I get around in the snow just so I can get to work. Now, the other purpose of this truck, as I was saying, you don't have to have four vehicles. This one serves two purposes. Category number two, which is you should have a beater in your life. Now, what do I mean by having a beater? A beater is, this is my cheap vehicle. If you notice the paint, Paint's coming off, don't care, it's cheap. I bought it as a cheap vehicle. I can beat on it, I can kick it. Look, I'm a tire kicker, wow. There are small dents, you can look, the paint is also scratched, it also is not very polished. Like, this thing is made to just be, you know, something I don't care about. I can leave it in a parking lot, somebody drives into it, most likely I'll be all right. And if I decide to drive somewhere that I think that, hey, the vehicle might get damaged, it might get stolen, anything like that. I don't really care as much about it. Like, I'll be a little disappointed because it's gone or damaged, but for the fact that I didn't really spend a lot of money on this thing, I'm not really gonna care that much. It's not that big of a deal. Now on to category number three. And pretty much that's going to be the car you want. And this right here is my 2018 Camaro SS1 Alley. <laughs> It's my daily driver. It's my good on gas-ish. I like the way it looks. I like the way it sounds. And obviously I get a lot of attention to this thing because it's bright blue and people seem to really like Camaros. Cause you should have a car that you like. You should have a car that you want to drive around that you feel good in. You know, this thing is kind of fast. It's fun to drive. And that's what you want. You want to have something special. And as for the actual fuel economy on this thing, it's not that horrible. I get somewhere in the mid 20s. I've even gotten the mid 30s on long trips. Proof that even with a big V8, you can get good fuel economy too. You just have to roll down a mountain everywhere. And obviously it's not one of those new hybrids that get like 45 miles a gallon, but it's not that thing. That thing gets like 12. So 30, 25, 12. I'm gonna go with this. Oh, category one. Category two, yeah, that, that's where we were. Category three, this is basically just gonna be your driver, your daily, your car you like to drive. So what is category number four? Category number four, I think that you should have some kind of race car, something that you can drive fast, not on the streets. The street is for obeying the speed limit and the law, but something you can drive fast on a closed course, you know, autocross, track days, drifting, anything like that. This kind of fits into that category. So as I said before, I can technically have 
two different vehicles that fit into the four categories but I don't have two, I have three. And that's number three, this is your race car. You know, this is not a great example of a race car, but this is my 1991 Nissan NX2000. This is a, or was, a lemons car. It is set up to be a cheap race car. Look, full roll cage, fuel cell. It's got a racing seat in here. You know, this is made so that you could drive around on a racetrack. Now you don't necessarily have to race, but you should do track days in this. You should do something where you're pushing your car to the limit so that you learn how to handle these situations. You know, every brake is an emergency brake. Every time you go around a corner it is trying to go around a corner as smoothly and as fast as you can, which means that you gotta learn how to avoid things. You gotta learn how to turn. You gotta learn, you know, how your car moves as you drive around corners, how it handles. You know, all of that fun stuff. It's not going to be very fast, but if you're learning to drive on the racetrack, this is probably something you should probably start with because if you drive this thing into the wall, nah, who cares? Now, I bet you're wondering why do I think that number four needs to be a race car? Well, I started off with three. As I said, you need something you can work with, you need something you don't care about, and you need something you can drive around daily that you like. Well, you need a race car because people don't know how to drive. Now, you may have passed your driver's test, but as a lot of you sure know, just because you passed your driver's test doesn't mean you know how to drive, doesn't mean you can drive, it doesn't mean you can handle any situation that comes up. What if you need an emergency brake? What if you need to swerve around something? What if it's icy? What if it's raining? And you need to know how to handle your car if your car gets into a situation that isn't the normal driving around. And doing all of that on the track is a much better situation than trying to do it on the road. The road is not made for doing, you know, race car stuff. It's not made for sliding. It's not made for, you know, trying to go as fast as you can. Great. Driving on the road is to get from destination A to destination B. This is for actually having fun. This is for learning how to drive fast. All you people that like to do 55 miles an hour in a parking lot, go do it on a racetrack. Don't do it in a parking lot. Not saying I'm actually a very good driver on the racetrack, but it's a good start. It's somewhere you gotta build your skills. You gotta do things over and over again so that you can one day be the greatest. But once you become the greatest in this car, you can upgrade, you can sell it. You can, depending on what your budget is, hey, this could be your next race car. You can put a cage in it. You can go do track days. You can start racing it, time attack, anything you like. All right, now we have talked about A. Why do we need four different types of vehicles? That have explained why each one you need one. Now let's talk about B. How am I supposed to afford four different types of vehicles, or if anything, two different types of vehicles? That seems like a lot of money. Well, let's talk about the average person. I took a look on the internet. I found out that the average used vehicle sold right now is $27,000. So let's say the average person buys the average car. So instead of buying that average car, which is probably, you know, Toyota Camry, Honda Accord, something a little bit newer in the used market, just so that they have something nice and reliable, we're gonna buy something slightly older. So for example, 1997 Chevy K1500. I bought this for a thousand bucks. So out of my $27,000 average price, we're just gonna go with a thousand bucks. Okay, so thousand dollars, and then we're gonna go with our race car. I bought this thing technically for $500, and then a bunch of extra parts and stuff, like you can see extra bumper, and I got a hood, and there's a bunch of other stuff for this thing. but. All together with a couple of things that I've had to buy to upgrade like if we go back here I had to buy a new bladder for the fuel cell I had to buy out my partner so in total for the vehicle for the parts and for the bladder I've spent about two thousand dollars on this vehicle so we have two thousand dollars pickup truck was a thousand bucks we're at three thousand dollars and that covers most of our vehicles. Now this thing obviously wasn't $27,000 or less. This was more than that, but we're gonna, we're not gonna talk about this one right now. Let's talk about my Mustang I had right before this one. It was basically, this was the replacement to the Mustang. This was my car I like to drive. This was decent fuel economy. This was the, you know, I felt good driving this car around. And that car I spent 17,000 bucks on. So with the Mustang at 17,000 bucks, and for those two vehicles over there, that's $20,000. That's $7,000 less than the average vehicle sold in the United States right now. Now, those are just examples of vehicles that you could buy. You could always buy whatever you wanted that fit into those different categories. Do whatever works for you, you know? 
But you want to have a little bit of everything, that way you could do a little bit of everything.